anytime it appears that you're backed into a corner and the enemy attempts to use his people to stack the cards against you, rely on God's wisdom because he knows everything and he can see what you can't. everyone and welcome back to Dr. Hester Speaks, a Women of Integrity ministry channel. Welcome back subscribers, my dear friends, and welcome to my new subscribers. Welcome to the Women of Integrity community. And if you're visiting for the first time, please be sure to hit the subscribe button at the bottom of this video frame so that you can be informed of upcoming videos, weekly videos. And at the end of the video, if you've liked it or really at any point doing the video, if you've liked it, please give it a thumbs up because that helps the video community as well. And it helps us to produce more content to support women. My name is Dr. Hester, and I'm a life coach, I'm an educator, I'm a conference speaker, and an author, and this channel is dedicated to developing women of integrity, all for the glory of God, because we believe His Word that says that He knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. He knitted together your most innermost parts, and He gave you a divine purpose, a divine passion, and a divine path. And He wants you to know the truth about your God-given identity. And our goal is to help you facilitate your personal development in all of these areas. This week, we're going to learn about the story of Abigail. Abigail, from adversity to triumph. We're going to look at what we can learn from her character, her diplomacy, and her integrity. Are you ready? Let's go. So today we're going to dive into Abigail's story. We're going to look at her background. We're going to look at the conflict and intervention. We're going to look at her response to adversity and we're going to talk about what happened at the end of Abigail's story. The story of Abigail is found in the Old Testament in the book of 1 Samuel, specifically in chapter 25. Abigail was a woman known for her, her wisdom, intelligence, quick thinking, and her beauty. She was married to a man named Nabal, who was described as a harsh and foolish man. He was very wealthy, and he had thousands of goats and sheep, but he was mean in his dealings. In a time of conflict and tension, one woman's wisdom and diplomacy changed the course of history. Abigail, a remarkable woman who whose actions exemplify the power of diplomacy. David was not yet king at the time, but he was on the run from King Saul, and his men were in the wilderness in Paran. So they came across Nabal's shepherds and flocks and helped protect them from harm. So when it came time for sharing the sheep, David sent his men to Nabal to ask for provisions as a gesture of goodwill and repayment for the protection they provided. However, when David and his men sought provisions from Nabal, he responded very rudely and arrogantly and refused to give anything to David and his men. David was angered by Nabal's response and decided to plan an attack on Nabal and his household in revenge. When Abigail heard what happened, she quickly intervened. Through discernment and recognizing the 
imminent threat, Abigail, through wisdom and humility, intervened to protect a tragedy from unfolding. She gathered provisions and went to meet David before he reached her household. In a wise and humble manner, she apologized for her husband's actions and offered the provisions to David and his men. She also spoke words of wisdom and respect to David, acknowledging his rightful place as the future king of Israel. David was moved by Abigail's actions, her grace, and her words of wisdom. He recognized that Abigail had prevented him from committing a great sin by seeking revenge. He praised her for her wisdom and righteousness and blessed her for her intervention. How do you respond when faced with impending doom, threats, or attacks against you? Write in the comment and let me know. How would you respond? This was the question that Abigail pondered. You see, logic may tell you to respond to an attack in one way. However, God sometimes flips that script and he directs you through the Holy Spirit to respond in a different way so that he can intervene to defeat the plans of Satan, which is to steal, kill, and destroy God's purpose. It may appear that evil deeds are getting victory but it is absolutely not so. It only appears that way because the world can manipulate circumstances in order to control others and to hide the truth about their own darkness. Remember, the need and the desire to control others is why Satan was kicked out of heaven. He didn't want to serve God. Mm -mm. He wanted to be God. And that's the same spirit that's motivating weaknesses in folks today. They see something that they want. They want to be you. And when they can't be you, they try to destroy and discredit you. And sadly, they have become slaves to evil and shortcuts through worldly systems. And if they don't get their way. They call in hunt dogs to track you. And if that doesn't happen quickly enough for them, they try other means of control. They try to be an authority and an expert on you and how you move. So in desperation, they try to track you. You see, control and envy will cause you to do desperate things in order to get your way. You know, when hunting dogs are called in, they're called in to sniff out a, a prey. The hunter gives the hunt dog a scent to follow, and immediately they're off to apprehend. So I submit that what you have to learn to do in a spiritual realm is to give that demon hunting dog another scent. A scent that'll lead them to a dead end. And because they are stuck in delusion and at the mercy of a demonic spirit of control, they'll follow that scent. Dead end. Until they get the message that you belong to God. And if they truly want to be like you, the only route is to surrender to God and follow Him. So when that demon spirit of control comes calling, resist him consistently. Don't answer. You know, Abigail was not that kind of sister. She was not that kind of woman. Doing good and doing the right thing moved her spirit. She had to be in alignment in communication with God. And I believe that she submitted her circumstances to the Father, and He gave her direction. Abigail was victorious and triumphant because of God's logic rather than man's.
God's discernment and God's wisdom was guiding her to stop the destruction of her entire household. Anytime it appears that you're backed into a corner and the enemy attempts to use his people to stack the cards against you, rely on God's wisdom because he knows everything and he can see what you can't. Only God has the big picture. So submit the situation to him, listen to his still voice, and hear what he's saying to your heart and follow the peace. Follow that path and direction and he will get the glory out of everything. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Abigail was a woman of insight, and she understood the power and the degrees, the nuances of diplomacy. At the end of Abigail's story, when Abigail returned home, she found her husband Nabal, feasting and drunk. She waited until he was sober the next day to tell him what had happened. So Nabal was struck with fear and remorse and shocked when he realized his foolishness had almost brought disaster upon his own household. His foolishness had brought him to the brink of disaster, a consequence he could not escape. He became ill and died 10 days later. After Nabal's death, David remembered Abigail's wisdom and righteousness. He sent for her and took her as his wife, showing her honor and respect. You know, Matthew 5, 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Abigail was a peacemaker, a child of God. And as a peacemaker, she trusted God's process and she exposed and defeated the author of confusion and the enemy of God. Her obedience showcased a big and powerful God who works through his people, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. Not man-made victory, but authentic victory from God. Being a peacemaker against the forces of evil goes against human logic. Even in the face of tragedy, Abigail remained strong and resilient. Her obedience, doing what was right before God, and her subsequent actions not only saved her household, but also led her to a new chapter in her life as the wife of a great king. Proverbs 4 says, do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. These qualities in Abigail's legacy teaches us the power of being in relationship with God and being in a position to hear his voice. It is a powerful example of the impact of diplomacy, of wisdom, grace, humility, and quick thinking in resolving conflicts, overcoming adversity, and adverting disaster when guided by our Heavenly Father. Know that you are valuable to the kingdom of God, or the enemy wouldn't need hunt dogs to track you. You wouldn't be on his radar as a relevant and viable threat. This means, this is a sign, that you are in the will of God. 
you, my sister, are a powerhouse for God with much to offer. And your presence, your unique, classy spirit is doing exactly what it was designed to do before you were formed in your mother's womb. You are designed to influence others to follow God's truth and to intimidate the powers of darkness so that God's light will set his daughters free. Proverbs 3 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Let the character of Abigail inspire you to approach challenges with courage and with integrity. This week, we've discussed Abigail, from adversity to triumph. We've discussed the story of Abigail, the conflict and the intervention. We've discussed her response to adversity and the triumphant end of Abigail's story. And my prayer for you is that you would let love and integrity guide your actions, that you would operate in compassion and kindness through the power of humility and influence others to do good. I pray that wisdom and diplomacy will increase as you operate in faith and trust in God, and that you would embody the courage to overcome challenges and adversity. And as you walk in God's favor, that these qualities would influence generations to come. In Jesus' name. So thank you for joining me today. I hope that you've been blessed, that you've received some guidance and some inspiration to keep going for God. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, share, comment, and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok. So until next week, you stay blessed and keep the light shining.